Hello, everyone. Welcome. Hi, I'm Marie. I'm Dan. Welcome to our show. Access Miracles. And uh, we have here Michael Caruana as our guest. Very excited. Yeah. <laughs> and um, just to ground down, you know, as an anchor for the show, which is what we've been doing, we are holding on to, as kind of our platform, the fourth miracle principle, which I'm going to read right now. All miracles mean life, and God is the giver of life. His voice will direct you very specifically. You will be told all you need to know. So with that, <laughs> I'd like to uh, welcome once again Michael. And <clears throat> um, Michael is overseeing the... Uh, the uh, La Casa, where, which is uh, the place where we live. And um, I had not met Michael before he came into uh, that position. And I am very happy to uh, be a part of um, this experience because uh, I'm learning a lot from him. And so <clears throat> we realized that there was a, a great deal of depth here and we wanted to check in with him and see what he could tell us about his experiences. I've written a few questions out and we've gone over them a little bit with him, but um, uh, we'll see where it goes. Um, there's a uh, lesson 135 in the Course in Miracles. It says, a healed mind does not plan. And um, my question to you is, uh, being that uh, there was a great big transition for you um, being a planner, <clears throat> a family provider, and a CEO of a company, um, to becoming a miracle worker, where you went from a position of of providing the answers, of of providing an income, of uh, making all the decisions, to one where you were to listen and follow. Can you elaborate on that a little bit for us? <laughs> transition. Uh, the transition. Oh, the transition. Yeah, the transition. Okay. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> where to start and where to go? <laughs> well, the uh, yeah, I was very wound into the world. It's it uh, very much involved, and I was studying the course for five years before I even went to a course group. And when I came across this course group. Uh, it was like a, a big light bulb went on like, uh, okay, I've really got to experience this Course of Miracles. I, I love the languaging of the course and just love the, I love being in meditation around it and contemplating it and what have you, but then it was time to really apply it. And I didn't know how to really do that. Um, I thought I did. I thought I was doing it, but I really wasn't. And uh, joining Course of Miracles study group was helpful and I learned about David at that very first meeting. And so the, the subsequent months, this was early 2009, by late 2009, I was really, I felt like I was really desperate to experience the course a lot more. And, I, and we had this retreat in Australia where actually Jason and Kirsten came and um, I don't know, something, another light bulb came on at that point where it was like, I needed a mind training partner. That's what, that's what I learned from that, actually. And... Uh, <clears throat> a mind training partner was a very helpful thing. And I, I wasn't even sure what that was exactly, but I knew I wanted one. <laughs> it was like a buddy, you know, someone who wanted to join the awakening with me. So I went to my wife, my then wife, and said, do you want to be my mind training partner? She said, yep. And uh, we did that for a few weeks and it really didn't work out that well. We're on two different paths, actually. But we gave it a good go. And from there, it was like a, <laughs> it was like a movement uh, there was a movement that I needed to make out of that marriage and out of the um, my life there, which was, you know, I prayed on very, a lot, actually, and I joined with mighty companions and became clear I needed to move on. But So it was really just being in touch with the spirit and getting really clear on what my desires are. What did I really want? Um, you know, I was living a nice life, but was that giving me what I really wanted? And it, it wasn't, you know, it was nice. It was nice, and that was it. It was, but I wanted more than nice, and you know, it was really cheeky. Is this the ego just wanting more? Now it was actually this real desire for awakening that was there that uh, 
that was really driving me <laughs> and that I really needed. And I was very much driven at the time. And so the spirit was using this, uh, <laughs> this driving and this planning that it was there to be able to move forth. My idea of being in the present moment back then was, was to plan. Actually, if I was thinking about the future, then I was present. Uh, if I wasn't, then there was something wrong, you know, because especially the, the business that I'd set up, it was like the sales needed to have now, happen now, so the cash flow was really happening uh, way down the track. So if the sales weren't happening now, then I didn't have cash flow down the track and, and this sort of, sort of thing. And so it was like this, this planning was happening all the time, you know, even just planning functions in the future and this sort of thing. And, and I just didn't really know how to be fully present. Although when I meditated, I actually felt this presence, but I wasn't able to bring that into my everyday life. And, this, and the guidance then really stepping in and saying, okay, I want to bring in this, this guidance. I want to bring this presence of mind that I have when I'm, when I'm meditating and when I'm reading the course into everyday life because it really seemed to be separated. My work life and my family life was different to my meditation and contemplation and being with the, the course. So that was it. Actually, 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 being really much, very much in tune with the spirit as much as I could, and then joining with the mighty companions. You know, um, a mind training partner came in that was very, very helpful. That deep desire. Someone, you know, Melanie came in who was amazing and uh, very, very helpful. Along with the mighty companions, I just found that very important. It was a very important step for me to be able to move on from. Uh, this place where I wasn't sure how to be fully present to be able to become much more present with a, having a shared purpose with someone. So, and I could just move on to, <laughs> you got other questions, but I think there's an important point that, uh, you know, we actually, an important part of this, if you call it transition, but certainly the progress in my mind was doing the mystical mind training program with Melanie. And so I'd have this mind training partner being able to have a buddy to do MMT. And at the time it was amazing. And now it's progressed way beyond what that was at the time uh, is incredibly helpful, you know, and I found before I came to community doing that program with a buddy was amazing. So whether you call that a plug or something, but it was actually very real for me at the time. Um, and I highly recommend yeah, mystical mind training. It was, it was really helpful with a buddy, you know, so <laughs> Wow, that's that's uh, that was something I hadn't <clears throat> experienced uh, before I came in the mystical mind training, and I've, uh, we've gone into it somewhat since being at La Casa, hmm. and uh, it is really powerful. Um, terms I've heard before and and experiences and so forth, but actually to to go into it and study it, it was hmm. really helpful. <clears throat> it's something I think that um, is one of the ways of uh, collaborating that uh, is available to everyone out there. And um, uh, I think that that's, that's probably a, a very strong way of, of keeping in touch with, uh, with the community, with, because it is really a huge community. It's, it's a collaboration. We were talking about it. And it was something that really struck us. Yeah, I think, you know, the community that we are speaking about isn't about the form, which is in Mexico or in Utah, you know, this is the community of that one mind that says, you know, I, I want to keep remembering that I am the child of God, you know, I want to keep remembering my innocence. And when you link with us through, you know, social media, whether it's Ellen Virtual TV, or you keep watching things like David's talks on YouTube, or listen to, we have weekly things that go on, you know, movie gatherings that are immediately Put online for people to listen to and to be a part of. Um, it's it's um, it's available to everyone. So this is all about everyone having access to the extension phase that Living Miracles is in. So yeah, this is this is an invitation for everyone. Nobody is exempt from this, and everybody can access it for themselves, so that we can hold the space for one another. Um, I had another question um, that <clears throat> had to do with. Uh learning how to uh how to trust and that was something we touched on just briefly um and you would given a couple of examples and i wonder if one of them being the trust walk and which was great i wonder if you could talk about that a little bit <laughs> <laughs> i 
is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think yeah, I'm guessing the point of this is to see how <laughs> where I was <laughs> yes. and how things can actually shift. If I can trust, then anyone can. I think that's because it's, because I was on a trust walk uh, at a devotional in uh, late 2009 with Melanie and you know, you have the blindfold on and they lead you around and you, you know, you, you trust, you're meant to trust them as they take you around and, and you just feel this connection with your, with your brother. Well, I, um, I was trying to lead her while I had my blindfold on, uh, <laughs> not trusting at all. And um, when I took the blindfold off, I said, uh, don't get used to this girly. <laughs> so <laughs> I was, <laughs> I had a long way to go to trust. Um, and uh, but with the desire in my heart, it was uh, there was that that transition. You know, um, I think I was actually I was very sarcastic and it blew me away when I really realised how sarcastic I was in my everyday life. I'd cover, I'd use humour to, to cover over um, the judgments that I had and the grievances, really. And so that was quite an undoing. But again, with the desire and um, really that single focus, like let thine eye be single, you know, from the Bible and being really that desire to be aligned with the spirit and joining with mighty companions was really, was this development of trust, was this undoing of the self or certainly this, you know, I had a lot of layers to get rid of just to start, <laughs> start getting slightly in tune with anything. Um, but it was very, very worthwhile. As I can see it just the, over the time and, and the desire has been the most, important part of this yeah right. yeah I, I think i i think i just want to segue and share for people like what my experience of you that i'm so glad you shared that with us dan and i yesterday because it's such a contrast it truly really is because my experience our experience of you at la casa is you know for somebody who came from this context of business which is time is money my experience of of michael is such patience time exits my awareness because he just sits there and allows whatever's rising from wh from whoever it is that's expressing. And yeah, it's just such, yeah, such presence, such patience. And also the other day when we had to drive out because we had a power outage and um, there were things that were forgotten. So we had driven out already when we, and then we had to come back to La Casa and, you know, Michael just turned around to those of us that were in the car and, with such humility, he just looked and said, well, we're back here again. He says, how does everyone feel? Do we stay or do we go? You know, in and of itself, it wasn't even so much the words. It was like how he was being about it and this openness and humility to being like, let's all really listen and pray. Does everybody hear the same thing? I don't want to just make the decision. It's, you know, it's that one mind. And I was really moved, really, really moved by how he was that moment. So... Yeah, thank you. Um, with the trust element that you had mentioned, was that something that, uh, how did that come about uh, for you? I mean, it, when you're shifting from being the boss, and i that's kind of what my experience was, you know, for I had my own business for a long time. And uh, so the, I guess my question really is, is, is that something that was like you heard it and you started to practice it and so forth, but was it and is it still an ongoing process? Is it something, how, how would you describe that? Yeah, it's, it is an ongoing process. It's, um, it's really a step-by-step -step. and even just like little steps. I was always into the big things, you know, big big, 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 everything had to be big, you know, big planner, big thinker. There's plenty of people who handle the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. That was my big thing. You know? And, um, and so of course, spirit brought it in where I really needed to get into small stuff. What seemed to be in my mind to be able to become much more attentive. Um, because really my, I was had a very much a monkey mind. I was very, very busy minded. And, uh, where I was thinking I was having all these great ideas, really, it was a lot of distraction. So just to be able to come into focus um, and just work on what seemed to be small, even mundane things, but really give my attention to it was what the spirit led me to, to, to help me focus eventually to focus on the spirit. I had a lot of resistance to start with, 
But I just knew deep down there was something to this, you know, even with the resistance, through the resistance, I could feel I meant to, to really focus on, on what seems to be small things so I could actually bring my alignment to the spirit more precisely and more consistently. So that's been really good. The mind training is for that, you know, and this word that I really had a big problem with, mind training, yeah, it sounded like brainwashing. And yet, you know, when I really learned that we are brainwashed by the ego, you know, the, the idea of, you know, that we could be separated from God is a brainwashing, you know, and then spinning out a cosmos. And so we need to be, if you like, mind trained instead of with the ego, with the spirit. And so it's a moment to moment thing, you know, in, in each moment is that we're either thinking with the spirit or thinking with the ego. We're in wrong mindedness or right mindedness. It's a big practice we do every day mm -hmm. there at La Casa in each moment, really, we're really on it because it's just so important, you know, and it's so easy to go into wrong mindedness. It's our default position, if you like, in the world. And, uh, and that's what we've been trying to do. So now we're training our mind for the default position, if you like, for our, for that consistency to, to go into right mindedness instead of the wrong mindedness where we can, really be in our right mind and the miracle all the time it can be as easy and, and as natural as breathing. That's what we want to come to. And that takes training. That's the mind training, you know, and that's, and that's very worthwhile. It's the only worthwhile thing to be doing actually, but we can do it anywhere and everywhere. Like it's not, everyone needs to be in community. It's, it's where you are right now, you know, to be fully present, you know, to be uh, not distracted with, with uh, the future planning or the past events, the memories, just to be here fully present now is, is the training in each and every moment. So it's not rocket science. It's actually really quite simple, but it's a, it's a training. It's, a, it's mindfulness that needs to happen to be able to do this. Um, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I think what, what I can hear for myself when you say that is how much of my mind is always involved in hypothetical health. You know, there's all kinds of like, oh, but what if, or oh, but what happened then? It's like, it takes a lot. And on the surface, it seems like it's, I don't know, um, harmless but actually that's where hell is that's i find that's where my hell lives you know and it's i yeah definitely and for somebody who as a cfo i mean i was in finance myself i was reporting to a C cfo as well it's like oh, finance is all about hypotheticals you know budgets and looking at past financial statements you're never looking at the present and to actually relinquish that is yeah that's pretty significant mm -hmm. you know so I don't know. I'm going to segue into the next question here, Dan, about inspiration. How do you feel about that? Inspiration. Let's see if I'm inspired here. <laughs> okay. Here um, we go. Before I before I go into that, there was something else that that I just that that occurred to me while you were explaining that mm -hmm. because in in a lot of our expression sessions, like in at lunchtime or whatever. There's, a, there's time taken at, to express how you're feeling, what it is, where you're feeling stuck. And, and you, have a, you have something that you do with your hand. You did it just then, and it was like this. And I'm like, that sticks in my mind. And it was like, go from where you are, go, come, back. come back, come back. And I thought that was great because it, it really does. It's very simple, but it's like, where you been? come back and i love that and it, it's it's something that for a simple-minded guy works really well you know <laughs> so i yeah i really appreciate that um so that that's that's just one of the of the ways that that you uh kind of bring us uh, along and and help us to remember um and then what about the music huh yeah um yeah, yeah go ahead with that yeah, I think that I think that's one of the things that keeps happening is that, you know, there's such a push in the mind about accomplishing this awakening thing. And so it gets very driven. But Michael's presence is so gentle, like he'll just he has laughter and he has patience and then he's always coming in with music. And and that's so restful because whatever defenses I have in my mind, I'm finding the subtle ones are showing up more so I can offer it to spirit and say, yeah, here, here you go. Here's another defense I have in my mind wanting to avoid something or wanting to pull something towards me or again, it's one of those hypotheticals. And so, yeah, Michael is music and dance actually. So, yeah, and I guess part of the question regarding that is that <clears throat> we, we notice that you are very joyful and, and musical. And I mean, 
at the end of a meditation in the morning, you, you break out into a song. And it's just like, wow, Is that that's, that's great. And, and how, do you, um, how do you manage to keep that? Because in terms of function, you have a lot on your plate. Mm -hmm. You, you really, it's, it looks to me like you really do. Um, so how do you, yeah. yeah. It's interesting. I guess that comes from the, what we were talking about earlier, where I was separating <clears throat> my meditational meditations and contemplation and reading the course and even doing yoga at the time. <clears throat> they were the, the stalwarts that I, that I worked on. I was waking up earlier and earlier in the, the old days, just so I can have a few hours of doing that. And then the rest of the day was, I'd get through it, you know, whereas now I, I feel like I'm bringing that more and more into everything that I do. Um, and I don't need to be still to bring that meditation or peaceful sort of vibe or being aligned with the spirit in. And so that just being aligned in each moment, it seems like the body could be doing quite a lot. And yet I'm, I feel at peace. I feel really good. And I find rest in whatever's given, you know, if when the more I can get out of the way, the more Michael gets out of the way, the more I'm in touch with the spirit, then he is just really using this puppet, this, this body for whatever his purposes are. So whether I'm sitting here talking to you right now, uh, I'm actually resting or the body seems very physical. It's actually, there's no real difference. I'm, I'm experiencing more and more now. Can't say I'm totally there, but it's happening. And I, I, I want to keep moving in that direction because I feel the benefit of it. I feel how wonderful it is. So whatever comes from that, and I really, I've had to work a lot on not making anything happen because you know, that's what I've done a lot in my life. And now it really just seems to be coming through. So if a song comes through, it's really not me doing it. You know, it's like the spirit prompting it. And it seems to be oftentimes we have a, in the morning, just like the perfect song comes in. I, mm. You know, it's not me. I, I couldn't possibly do that you know, out of the tens of thousands of songs out there. Somehow a song comes out or a, a clip or a something. I don't know. Something comes through, uh, which I just love. You know, I get as much. It, it's not as if I'm doing it for anyone else. I think this is the, another key point that whereas I used to do a lot of things for others and thinking that was very uh, spiritual mm -hmm. and I was being, you know, very giving, it was actually coming from a place of the ego. It was actually the spiritual ego, if you like, a place of... Um, thinking I'm trying to do right in the world, but really it's not w what was coming through. It was what I thought was right. Um, whereas now I, I'm feeling like I'm aligning a lot more with the spirit and doing what he wishes, and then that's going to benefit me and the whole. You know, there's no question about that, that I've seen it now over and over and over again, the experience I've had with when I'm aligned with the spirit, the whole universe, the whole cosmos benefits from it, me and everybody else. You know, it's the amazing thing about following guidance where it really doesn't make any sense to do anything else because it's not just for me and it's not just for them or those or anything else. You know, it's a, everyone benefits from following the guidance, following the spirit. So really working on getting out of the way as much as possible and aligning with the spirit is really the only worthwhile thing to do. <laughs> you know, yeah, and then releasing yeah. the blocks that, that come up around that. That's the other important part that we, we know about and having someone who's willing to hold the space for you to do that is, is the other important part. But with that, then that's the whole awakening process. You know? Yeah. Um, do you have any suggestions regarding <clears throat> um, people uh, who are very much interested in this, but maybe don't have a partner, don't have a group, um, feel themselves to be relatively isolated, uh, ways that they can um, like, tie in mm. to exactly what we're doing and what we're you know, this whole experience of <laughs> right, right. yeah community is not for everyone that's for sure and uh but there's like everyone on the screen there right now they they can be mighty companions or a number of them there's no reason to do this by yourself anymore you know because there's such an opportunity with people beaming in here you must have an interest in this and if someone strikes you as oh i'd be interested in joining with this one or these ones there's an opportunity just to chat and and connect with them right now <laughs> so there's that and i think through facebook facebook is an, can be an amazing tool i think there's a lot of studies how destructive it is and everything else and of course anything given to the ego can be destructive but anything can be given to the but it all can be used by the spirit the spirit can use anything in form so facebook can be very helpful um and uh yeah, there's various ways of connecting in that can be very, very helpful. So Yeah, it seems like a matter of determination. Yeah. 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 
you know, and linking into these shows, of course, is great. We have the online retreats and uh, linking in any way you possibly can, I think, is really helpful. I wish I had this <laughs> back, uh, yeah. you know, when I was starting out because I, yeah, it seemed very difficult at the time, whereas now it seems a lot easier. So that there really is no excuse. If you really want it, then it's available for you, you know, and just reach out. Yeah. Mm. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, do you have something to say? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Francis <laughs> Zhu said, uh, and this, and this Zhu. Zhu, yeah. She said that, um, that when inspiration is greater than fear, you take the leap. And whether or not that, what that looks like exactly uh, is, is specific for each of us. It's just different for everyone. But um, did you, or do you still see that as being a, a, a significant move for people? I mean, it seems like fear, I've heard it a lot. You know, I, I really am feeling that I, I need to do something, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid to move. I'm afraid to go back. I'm afraid to go forward. I, I feel like I'm stuck. What, what, what would you say to someone who comes up with that dilemma? Yeah, it's really just praying. And, and if you've given a step, just to take that step, no matter how small, you know, um, that's really what it's about. Fear is going to come up. It's, it's the ego. It's going to come up. And so just knowing it's, it's going to be there, I don't know, for me, it was incredibly helpful because I thought it was a problem, but it's just not. Fear is going to come up and it's the veil that the ego puts up. But when you take the step, no matter how small you take a step towards what's given, what's guided, the veil will come down and the fear will come up. Okay. And again, mighty companions can be helpful for this, but just take the step, no matter how small it is, just do it and then take the next step. I, I give the... Um, I remember in the world when I was very much, and I used to say this a lot to people when we used to talk on these great big projects, it's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And so it's a similar thing in awakening. And I guess it's really just taking the step. And what seems to be a concrete wall really is just that, that thin fog. And on the other side is the light. And so just take the step. That's it. It's just about taking the step. What was your inspiration? What is it right now? What inspires you? The spirit, really. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I just want to. It's the awakening. It's, you know, God is what is my inspiration. That's my whole inspiration. And whatever is given to serve that is what inspires me in the moment. Mm. And it could be anything. Whatever it is now, I'm, I actually don't mind whatever it is, <laughs> whether it's cleaning a dish mm. or doing what seems to be a big project or this right now. It all is very, very inspiring if it's given in the moment. So, yeah. Thank you. Wow, is that half an hour? That's amazing. I know. <laughs> we're just the trains just got told you it go really fast. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, and I and I think we covered all our questions actually. Oh really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Amazingly, miraculously. <laughs> yeah, it's probably nothing else to say. That was everything. <laughs> we can Basically. just do that. Yeah, it's always the question: Are you complete? Well, it kind of feels that way. But I just right. wanted to thank everyone too yeah. for coming. Thank you for being our guest. Yeah, in the show it's, it's, it's really great. Really, really good. So. Yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. And yeah, just to kind of segue, you know, it's that we have an, an online retreat coming, and the subject is the development of trust and devotion. So we kind of cover that pretty, pretty nicely in this mm -hmm. session, and. Um, yeah, that's, it's very interactive, isn't it? So it's fantastic. This is yeah, beautiful really here is. where we join, but you really actually get to ask questions and really be involved. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's very, very intimate. And it's, it's, it's really a moving experience to be a part of, even if you didn't speak and you just sat there and you just watched, but it's, it's really remarkable. So thank you, okay. everyone. Being waved off. <laughs> yeah. Where's the hook? The hook? <laughs> Love you guys. Thank you thank for you being everybody. with us. Thank you. Love you. <laughs>